Hi, my name is Jennifer Matos, and I'm the Executive Director of the Noah Webster House and West Hartford Historical Society. Today I'm bringing you the seventh edition of our armchair tour of West Hartford history, and I am bringing it to you here in Bishop's Corner. So Bishop's Corner, we all probably know as one of West Hartford's shopping districts. It originally started out as just more farmland back in the days when West Hartford was the farming district of the city of Hartford and known as the West Division. Well, in 1797, a new road was built called the Talcott Mountain Turnpike, what we would today know as Route 44 or Albany Turnpike. And that turnpike took people to Hartford and it crossed through North Main Street. So what happened is a little shopping center developed around the intersection of the Turnpike and Main Street um, and at first started off with um, some, some blacksmiths and some taverns, which of course would be for the travelers who were traveling by horse and carriage at the time. Now, you may wonder how Bishop's Corner got its name. It comes from a man named Joseph Bishop. So Joseph Bishop arrived in town around 1842 and he owned a large piece of land where he actually had a tobacco farm with a warehouse and a processing area. And the, the, the name of the center comes from him, Joseph Bishop. Now, as we go through in time, this corner really still re remains very much rural. Um, in around 1950, there was one major restaurant here um, on the corner, which was known as Dutchland Farms. And Dutchland Farms was a dairy bar and a restaurant. It was um, known for its iconic windmill that sat out front, and also for the fact that they provided pony rides to children. Well, in 1950, the owner of Dutchland Farms sells the land to a man who wants to develop this whole area into a shopping plaza. And the shopping plaza is to be anchored by Lord and Taylor, the department store. Now, if you can imagine in West Hartford in 1950, there are no department stores, there's no West Farms Mall, there's no other shopping area besides West Hartford Center, which is really all mom and pop shops. So this was a huge deal. And most of the townspeople in West Hartford did not want Lord and Taylor to come here. So they actually, there were debates within the town, um, looking at zoning regulations, and this lasted for a couple years and actually went the whole way to the Connecticut State Supreme Court, who uh, ruled in favor of Lord and Taylor coming here to West Hartford. So Lord and Taylor opens on February, February 24th, 1953, the CEO of uh, the company actually is here to make sure that everything goes smoothly. Um, this is a massive store for its time. It, it boasted two acres of retail space and uh, everything was to perfection. Uh, the workers were kind of making last minute um, adjustments to the store up until the very last minute, um, but right before the store opened, including pasting apple blossoms, fake apple blossoms onto the barren February trees. They also misted 10 gallons of Landvin's Arpege perfume all over the parking lot to greet visitors. Uh, so it was definitely a very spectacular opening here in West Hartford. The day of the opening was also one of the worst days of traffic in West Hartford history. So the store was open all day until midnight and by the time it closed, 35,000 people had visited the store. The West Hartford Police Department estimated that the traffic ran about five miles either direction, any direction. Um, so it certainly was a very crazy day to be here in West Hartford. And of course, at that time, this was something West Hartford was totally unfamiliar with. The population was slowly growing, but they had never seen anything of this type of retail before. Now, given the popularity of Lord and Taylor's, a lot of the other areas in Bishop's Corner also were sold and started to be developed. Um, across the street, we had um, a bakery, a supermarket, and a drugstore, which would be in the location of, of where Whole Foods and uh, CVS Pharmacy is today. Um, they um, also then, the supermarket moved over to where Staples is today, and in the place of the supermarket, Crown Market. Uh, became located and of course that is still a beloved institution today. Um, 
As for Lord & Taylor, as you can see, it's no longer here. We have a, a Marshalls and a couple other smaller stores behind me. Um, when Lord & Taylor moved to West Farms Mall in the 1970s, they actually uh, reused the space for Caldors, which is also very much long gone and now part of, of American history. Um, what I'm going to do is post some pictures of some of the scenes of the opening day of Lord & Taylor and some other views of the shopping plazas here in Bishop's Corner so that you guys can see what it was like. Um, and I hope I see you next week for our next armchair tour. Thanks so much.